Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I know it has been a long time since we've done a BoxyCharm spoiler update, and I feel like I've neglected the entire month of January, so today I'm going to round up everything we already currently know. I am going to take you through the choice items because I feel like I have notes and things I need to say on them, and I just want to talk about everything going on in the world of BoxyCharm for January 2022. So if that's something you're into, make sure to keep on watching and don't forget to subscribe because I upload every other day and that'll be the best way to stay up to date on all the fun stuff I'm posting. So if you're ready to jump into BoxyCharm spoilers, teasers, sneak peeks, whatever you call them, as well as the choice items and full reviews on every single one because I've actually used, touched, played with, or tried pretty much every single one except one and we're going to talk about that today. So if that's something you're into, stay tuned. So I am going to go through choice first, and this is going to be for the base item. Now there are three items that you can choose between, and I have at one point or another owned all three. Now the first is going to be probably my favorite choice, and it is the NARS Orgasm Blush. Now the reason this is a choice is that this was an item featured in BoxyCharm Premium. So if you don't have the Premium box, this is your chance to get it. Now some of these products are repeat products across all of the tiers, and I feel like BoxyCharm is listening. I know there are a lot of people who get multiple tiers and they don't want repeat items at all, but I got a lot of people who were commenting on my premium unboxing when the NARS Orgasm Blush came, and they were really upset that as a base subscriber, they were not able to get this blush. It's a beautiful blush. It is a cult classic blush. I'm actually going to, as I talk about it, put a little bit more on because more is more and you can never use too much blush. And it is so stunning. And I love that if you didn't get it in the past, this is something that you can get now. That being said, if you already own it, obviously this is not going to be your choice, but of the products in here, this is my favorite as far as the things I continue to go back to. The next one is from Wander Beauty, and it is the Wondrous Escape Eyeshadow Palette. Wander makes some of my favorite products, however, I am not the biggest fan of their eyeshadow formula, and here's why. At least I'm going to have to try it again now that I live in Colorado. But I used to, in New York and in Florida, have very greasy eyelids. So any cream shadows didn't work for me, and their eyeshadows aren't powder eyeshadows. Like, they are. Technically, it's a powder, but they are so emollient and so creamy that they perform more like a pressed cream eyeshadow. So for someone like me in New York, I didn't really work well with them. Now that I live down here and my lids don't crease as often and I'm not as greasy, I definitely think it's something I would be more interested in revisiting. So of the three items, that's the one I'm hoping to get because I already have this one and I'm going to get into the third one in a second. The third item is from Pharmacy and it is the Filling Good Hyaluronic Acid Plumping Serum. It is a hyaluronic acid face serum. Now, hyaluronic acid is an amazing ingredient for hydration. It causes your skin to grab moisture out of the air and hold on to it. It is one of the best ingredients in skincare. That being said, it is my least favorite ingredient to have on its own. The reason why is you can't really make hyaluronic acid better. It's a good product, and if something is strictly hyaluronic acid, it's a pretty affordable serum to make, and I don't think it's worth a $44 price point. Now, for example, one of my favorite serums, the Resveratrol Lift Serum from Caudalie, has vegan collagen, hyaluronic acid, and resveratrol, which is an anti-aging ingredient, all in one product. Hyaluronic acid is amazing in your moisturizer. It's great if it's in a serum. But if you're going to be looking for a great hyaluronic acid serum, go get a cheap one from The Ordinary or for the drugstore because the cheap hyaluronics are just as good as the expensive. It's whether or not they have other things in there too. So I'm going to be hopeful that I don't get the pharmacy. If I do get it, it's going right in my giveaway bin. I'm not even going to waste my time putting it on. I get plenty of hyaluronic in the rest of my skincare that I don't need a serum dedicated to it. Moving on to premium, there are two choice items and I'm going to take you through all six potential items. Choice item number one is between a few items. First, the Cult Classic Bare Minerals Mineral Veil Loose Setting Powder. Now, I don't have it anymore. I did downsize it when I moved down here because I didn't realize it was going to be a spoiler, and I don't particularly love the powder. It's a good setting powder if your skin is normal. If you are dry, it will make you look dry. If you are oily, you will continue to show oil through your powder. So it only works if you have normal skin, which is like 1% of people. Everyone else is either normal, combo, or oil, uh, combo, oily, or dry. So few people are normal. Now, if you're normal, 
you can totally use it. But if you're dry, you're going to want to pack on so much hydration that there are better powders to use. And if you're oily, you're going to be touching up throughout the day no matter how much mattification you're using before you use it. I'm going to pass on this product. Now, there are also two products from Kosas. One is the Airbrow Tinted Voluminizing Treatment Gel. It is a brow gel. It's a little sparkly, and I don't mean shiny, I mean sparkly, which does give you this illusion of natural brow hair. It's pretty sheer, so it's very like the natural brow. If you like to have something pretty substantial on your brows, probably not for you, but if you like that soft and natural brow look, similar to what I like, a little bit of brow powder and a brow gel to lock it in and that's it, then it could work for you. The other one is the Clear Lifting Treatment Gel from Kosas as well, and it's their Clear Brow Gel, which just locks clear things in place. Now, I was looking through my collection and I have a few brow gels. My favorite of all time is the Milk Makeup Kush Brow. I have the Benefit Brow Gel. I have Anastasia. My favorite is still Milk. I have backups of that, so I don't want to get the Kosas one, but I would be happy getting the clear one because I was looking at my collection and I have no clear brow gels for some reason. So definitely more interested in that. But there's also the Izzy Zero Waste Beauty Black Mascara. Looking at the wand, it is a pretty full wand, and it is a $39 price point, so that's an expensive mascara. My top two mascaras are $29 and $19 respectively, so this is almost double the price of one of them and over $10 more than the other. That being said, I do love trying new mascaras, but for me, I always, ending up, always end up going back to my Beauty For Real High Def Mascara. One of my favorites, it came in Ipsy a while ago. I am... Spoiler alert, I'm very good friends with the CEO. She is one of my favorite people ever, and it's also my favorite mascara, and it's the reason why I trust her with any makeup recommendation ever. Her name is Leslie. I'm going to link her TikTok down below because the way she speaks about makeup for mature skin is unparalleled. She's a celebrity makeup artist. Her TikTok is down below. Go check her out. But that mascara will always be my favorite. So between the two brow gels, the mascara, and the powder, I'm going to hope for the clear brow gel, which is actually the least exciting item there. But it's the one I'm the most interested in. And the next two items, I have used both of them. One is the Cover FX Custom Enhancer Palette. I don't own it anymore, but I used to. I don't know what happened to it. I'm not sure when it got downsized, but it definitely got downsized in one of my moves. It's a really creamy formula, and it does leave a beautiful glow to the cheek. I love their highlighters, and it has some really nice tones in it. Now, what I will say is there is something in there for everybody. There's a pinky color, a champagne color, and a bronzy color. And if you're deeper, you're going to get great use out of the bronze, and the other two will maybe work on your inner corners of your eyes. If you're my complexion, you could probably get rid of, get used to either of the lighter two, and you'll have to use the bronze on your eyes. Really, there's ways to make it work, but I don't think it works for anybody, I think it works for everybody, and I don't think everyone is going to love every shade in there. That is going against the Wishful Clean Genie Cleansing Butter, which is a cleansing balm to take off your makeup. My two favorite makeup removers ever, Caudalie Makeup Removing Oil and Pharmacy Green Clean. I love both of those, and I like both of those so much more than the Wishful one. Now, if I get it, I would be happy to try it. I have already owned the cover effects. So I'm more interested to get the Wishful and try it again, see if, since my skin has changed, maybe it's something I'll be a little bit more receptive to. But just looking as a whole, I think the Cover FX is a better product, but because of the experience I have with it, I am more inclined to want the Wishful to give that a second chance versus go for a product I already know I liked, but at some point I decluttered it for a reason. And when I declutter my makeup, I swatch a million things up and down my arms, and I pick what I think is the best, and it did not make the cut, but I remember really liking it. So it's one of those like, take my advice with a grain of salt. If you are looking for a good highlighter, I remember it being really good. I just don't remember liking it as much as the stuff I kept. Now, as far as the general BoxyCharm news, I do want to address some spoilers because there have been a ton of people talking about many Huda Beauty products that they are claiming are coming to BoxyCharm. And now I don't want to be the person to shit on everyone's dreams. I don't want to do it. I promise. That's not my intention. Is it possible? Yes. Ipsy owns BoxyCharm. Huda just did an Ipsy takeover, and there wasn't a lot of Huda Beauty in there. So maybe part of that deal was negotiating Huda products to get into the BoxyCharm boxes. I have seen a lot of people talking about the eyeshadow palettes, which we have received in the past. I have seen people talking about the Tantor, which is a cream contour. It's winter. Cream contour is pretty trendy. 
but also we don't contour the way we used to. I mean, we used to wear full coverage foundation and now most of us wear tinted moisturizers or things that are a little more lightweight. So we don't contour as much. We just add a little bronzer and we're good. So that being said, I don't know if that's necessarily a product I'd be excited for. They're also talking about the Kiali fragrances, which is also under the Huda umbrella. And finally, everyone's talking about the setting powders. I do want to take a special moment to highlight the setting powder specifically because it is an amazing product. Now, I'm actually happy with how my makeup looks today, but I think we're a little shiny in this area. And this is actually what I think this powder specifically is the best for. So number one, I love that it has a little sifter net in there. So I can dip my brush in and pick up powder without it getting everywhere. And I like to take this down the side of the nose. See how this side is instantly mattified and perfected and this side is still a little shiny. It has a little bit of a tint to it. It does come in eight different colors and it just perfects everything. Now, like most Huda products, it definitely does have a scent to it. But I love taking this powder when I've finished my makeup and I'm done and I've been wearing it for a few hours. I mean, I've had it on for like two hours now and I feel like I wanna to touch it up, but I don't just wanna mattify it. I wanna add a little bit of coverage. I like to take it and just like I did, I will pat it where I want the coverage and then when there's nothing left on the brush, I will just kind of feather it everywhere else. And what that'll do is it'll cause all of the oil to absorb into the powder. It'll allow your blush to look like it's shining through your makeup as opposed to sitting on top of it. And it just makes everything look a little more perfected. But notice, there's not so much coverage in there because it's not a coverage powder, it's a setting powder, that you still see all of my highlight and you still see my blush, and it doesn't downplay any of that. So if this is coming to a box, it is probably the most exciting product I could think that could come if we're gonna get any of the ones that they've been teasing. But yet again, I do wanna remind you, none of that is confirmed. As always, let me know your thoughts down below. I would love to hear what you think is coming, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.